So if you don't have SharePoint in, in your environment and you have just reporting services, uh, reporting, Report Builder is consumable through just the regular native reporting services interface as well. All right, so let's take a look at Report Builder. On my SharePoint site that we were looking at, I have a library. So it's a SharePoint library that I'm going to show you here. Uh, and I've named it here Reporting Services Library. Okay. Now inside this library, I had to turn on a couple features, uh, and I won't, I won't go through showing you that right now, but I did have to turn on a couple features to make sure that this library could consume reporting services objects, meaning reports, data sets, data sources, that sort of thing. Uh, and once I've done that, once I've turned on those objects, I'm now able to create new reports. So I can go up to my file menu here and say that I want to create a new document, and it'll allow me to launch open the Report Builder tool. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and open up the Report Builder. Now, inside the Report Builder, if you were to create a new report from scratch, there actually is some somewhat user-friendly capability in here to create reports and create data sets on your own. But if you're not comfortable creating data sets off of cubes, for example, you could leverage things that developers have developed. So as I mentioned earlier, you could use things like a shared data set, deploy those shared data sets off to the server, and then your end users could consume those shared data sets from there as well. Uh, same could be said for report parts. So report parts are basically pieces of a report, and then your users can consume those parts inside their very own reports that they develop. Now what I'm going to show you first here is we're going to create a basic report, and I'm going to walk through the interface assuming I don't have things like shared data sets and report parts available to me, just so you can see the difference between the two and, and understand how much of a benefit it gets you uh, as an end user to have those things pre-developed. So we're going to start by, the, it, it, it's very wizard based in this, so if you've used the Visual Studio environment for reporting services, it is uh, much more detailed and has many more knobs that you can turn. When you use the Report Builder tool, it's much more wizard based. So you'll find that anything that you do usually has a wizard associated with it to walk you through it. And again, that's because this tool is built more for power users to be able to build out reports on. Alright, so we're going to build a new report and I'm going to build a table or matrix wizard here. You'll see that I do, I can't optionally pull in a shared data set, but this first one I actually am going to create my own data set just to show you how simple or difficult you may think it is. So we're going to create a new data set here on the bottom and then hit next. Okay, now I can pull in a data source and if I have a data source already stored on the server then I can hit browse here and find that data source. Or if I need to create a new connection to a data source, I can simply hit new here. Uh, I actually have one on the server already, so I'll hit browse. And then find in the folder location where I've stored that data source. Now it may actually, let's see if it picks my data source up here. Yeah, it certainly does. So I can see I have an AdventureWorks analysis services data source here that if I hit and click open, I'm now able to reuse an existing data source. I don't have to uh, continually create the same data source over and over. My developer deployed out my data source, and now I can consume it. All right, I'll hit next here now that I've selected a data source to use, and it's going to walk me through creating a query. So this is the query that I'll use for uh, the data set and the report. So I could go find inside this data set, or build this data set, and tell it that I want to bring in my sales that occurred on the internet. So I'll bring in internet sales. Okay. I may want to also bring in a parameter. I want to parameterize this so I can see how my sales did by year. Okay, so you can drag parameters up here to the very top section. This is actually the filter section up top here, but if you want to parameterize something, you simply check off this little parameter button on the far end, and that'll turn it into a reporting services parameter. You can also change the filter expression. This filter expression value that you check off is the default value that's going to be brought in whenever the report runs. So by default, I'm defaulting this to calendar year 2007, but I've made it a parameter so it can be changed to other values by the user. All right, so right now we're looking at internet sales 2007, uh, but I also want to see this by, let's say for example, my product list. So I want to see my, each of my products listed out on this report. So I'm just using this tool here to drag and drop and create my report. As you notice, I haven't had to actually write any code on my own. It's allowed me to uh, do all drag and drop here. Now that's going to be the same for developers as well. Whenever developers create reports off of cubes, it will allow them to do drag and dropping to start off with. Uh, now if I had selected SQL Server as my data source, 
and I was a developer using Visual Studio, I would have to probably write out the query that I would like to, to pull in as a data set. But from Report Builder, if I were to connect to SQL Server, it actually does give me another drag and drop interface where I can build out a query. It's not the best uh, interface for building queries, but it is something to help end users be able to write SQL code. Uh, now, if I wanted to see what was going on under the covers, I've been doing all dragging and dropping here, but if I wanted to see exactly what's happening underneath, I can hit this little button up top here called Design Mode, and it'll show me the code that's being written for me. So you're always able to go look at that and see exactly what's going on with the code that's uh, being created from this drag and drop interface. Okay, so I'm happy with this data set. I got a very small data set, but it's, uh, it'll work for me. So I'll hit Next. Okay. Now it's going to ask me where would I like to place these objects on my report, or where would I like to place these fields. So I could place things like the Internet Sales Amount under the Value section, and I probably want to see the products under the Road Groups. And you can really drag them around to any section that you prefer. You can move them around very easily here. All right, I'll finally hit Next. It's going to ask me, how do I want to lay out my report? Do I want to show subtotals and grand totals? Yeah, sure, we can go ahead and do that. And hit Next again. And then it'll ask you, what kind of theme do you want to have? Or style. How do you want to style your report? Just gives you different color coding that you can do here. It's just completely up to you here. And hit Next. And then we have our report. So I can hit run in the top left, and this will preview my report for me so I can see exactly what I'm getting myself into here. This gives me a little preview that I'll, I'll be able to experience what the report can do before I deploy it off to the server. Now in this report, you can see that I did create a parameter up top here, a year parameter where I can select the year that I'd like to see inside the report visualized. So I can change it to 2006 and hit view report. And then you can see it does affect my data as well. Now that wizard that we just walked through is good in that it can create a very basic report very quickly, but it leaves out a lot of things like formatting. So things like uh, this is a sales amount, I probably want to represent this data as a currency here. So things like that that are, are, are actually really important get left out, and they're pretty e easy to add back in. So for example, if I wanted to add formatting to this report, I could go back to design here, right click on the cell that I want to add the formatting to, and go to the properties of the cell where I can give it a currency format. You could also apply formatting up here in the typical office ribbon where I can tell it that this is really a currency. 